Good evening and a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us today in what is going to be yet another exciting session. You all know that we are, you know, in the midst of the festive season and we are also in the middle of rising cases of Corona like we've never seen them before. But at the same time, we all want to look our best, but some of us are still not confident enough to step out into salons. So we at Sipping Thoughts are bringing the best of makeup artists to ensure that you yourself can do the best job possible sitting in the comfort and luxury of your own homes. And today we've got you Inayat Trehan, an international makeup artist, who is going to be teaching us a beautiful festive eye makeup look because as we all know we can all communicate with our eyes and eyes are the windows to our soul. Uh, I usually spend the most amount of time doing up my eyes uh, with the most intricate uh, um, you know uh, and careful amount of detail and uh, Inayat here today is going to tell us that it's not as difficult as we imagine it to be. But before I introduce her properly, let me say a few words about Sipping Thoughts. Sipping Thoughts, as you all know, is a multi-platform media company co-founded by my good friends Sukirti Gupta and Meeta Gudgutia. It was set up keeping in mind the tagline, Real Women, Real Thoughts. We are a no-judgment platform where we want to create a network of women for women. Sipping Thoughts is available on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and of course, on our website by the very same name. Now, Inayat Trehan was the youngest person to have worked for Bobby Brown and started working there when she was just about 19 years old. And that's how her makeup journey started. She worked for them for six years, she has also worked with Clarence, which is, of course, a huge name abroad. And uh, very recently, Inayat has moved from New Zealand to Delhi, which, of course, is our gain. The very first time I saw Inayat on Instagram, um, I was amazed at how beautiful she was and what amazing makeup she did. In fact, I didn't know if she was the model or the makeup <laughs> artist herself. She was so gorgeous to look at and hugely talented, of course. Um, but before we begin this exciting session, a few do's and don'ts. You're all going to be on mute, but because we want this session to be as interactive as possible, please do keep chatting with us and sending us your thoughts and questions. Um, we're all going to, um, we are going to try and get you to ask your own questions as and when possible. Please do keep uh, the questions as relevant and to the point. And um, please forgive us for any technical glitches because you do know that is beyond our control at times. So without further ado, let's start. Um, Inayat, very Hi. warm welcome. Thank I'm you. I'm so excited about this session. I'm How have you been? I'm excited too. I'm, I'm good. How are you guys? I hope you all guys are safe and uh, you know, taking care of yourself. Yes, which is why we are so happy to have you come here and teach us how to do a beautiful festive eye makeup look. But before we begin, Inayat, I want yeah. to know a little bit about your journey and the fact that you are or you were the youngest person ever to have started with Bobby Brown. Yeah. So, well, um, I was back in New Zealand when I was doing my, I was in school, I was doing medical and as every Indian parent, like not now, but back in days, so, you know, um, parents obviously want you to be successful in your career. And I don't know, it's just Indian mindset or what. They just want you to be a doctor or lawyer or engineer or something related to studies for yeah. sure. And uh, that my dad was same. He just wanted me to become a doctor. And uh, but I was always very passionate about art since the starting. And I always love everything about art, either it's playing with colors or painting or, you know, just visiting like nice artistic places. I always enjoyed it. 
And um, though I never had guts to tell my dad <laughs> what I wanted, and you can't believe I even got into the medical college. And then um, just two weeks before that, uh, my mom asked me this question. I don't know why you don't seem happy about it. And I was like, okay, um, the real thing is that I don't want to be a doctor. <laughs> and then she's like okay so what you would like to be I was like I don't know yet I just love makeup I love colors I really want to do something in it so uh, that time was tough because obviously you know it's so hard to get into medical college and you know just two weeks before you're you were about to go there you're like no I don't want to do this so it was a tough journey but then I don't know how somehow I convinced my mom uh, she was with me throughout thick and thin dad was a little upset in the starting but then you know he realized with time like you know with time you get better and then I joined the makeup school which was um, back in New Zealand it's called Cut Above um, it's on Queen Street it's a makeup academy and they teach you every sort of makeup there. there's like different levels of uh, uh, you know whatever you want to do so I got into it I did my makeup artistry from there and then I end up applying for jobs straight away because I just wanted to gain experience obviously working with different people and um, I remember I just randomly went for Bobby Brown's interview they selected me and I just when I had no idea what was Bobby Brown was all about I was just being honest because you know obviously when you're 19 you just entered in the wall and you don't know what's going on but I knew it was a beautiful really renowned makeup brand out there but um, yeah after three interviews being a practical in it also I got selected so I was just 19 when I started my journey with Bobby Brown. So yeah, it was a beautiful, uh, you know, roller coaster of up and down. But eventually I end up doing what I love. So yeah. And it's, uh, you're so hugely talented. I'm sure you were an asset for them, considering the fact that you were with them <laughs> for six long years. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually was with them for uh, three years. Okay. And then after three years, I uh, Clarence approached me and then I started working with Clarence. But Bobby Brown and Clarence were kind of like neighbors. So I always <laughs> used to be like, you know, two in one. So, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So tell us, uh, Inayat, so how come you thought about shifting to um, Delhi from New Zealand? Oh, well, I got married. So oh, I had no idea I will ever shift to India, Delhi, because uh, my whole family is back in New Zealand. But then I end up marrying love of my life and he lives wow. here. So I thought, okay, you know, it was like a new experience for me to, you know, move to India. But then I was like, you know, why not? I, I can take my talent out there and I can help so many people out there with my work and uh, I love dolling up my brides my clients and helping people so it's just it's just great to be here um yeah so great New Zealand's loss is Delhi's gain welcome <laughs> <laughs> definitely fantastic so I think um, let's all start we're all eagerly awaiting and okay. wanting to see what you have to teach us today okay Awesome. So basically what I'm trying to do today, uh, so it's all about festivize, so how we can do festivize. So festivize define something that you can wear with any sort of outfit. You don't have to worry about your outfit color. And uh, it's really important to do something neutral, neutral in a way that can go with every sort of outfit. Like, you know, either you're wearing Indian or you're wearing like Indo-Western so I'm planning to do um, kind of like a brown smoky eye with a bit of, bit of gold and shimmer in it. And I feel like it'll be a great way to also um, start um, about it in a way like, for example, I'll be using these sort of colors here. So it's like all neutral family. So if you, you could tell see. us, Inayat, what palette is that? So it's one, one of my most favorite and uh, for sure you guys need to buy this. It's by Jacqueline Hill, Morphe palette. This is volume one. 
so this is basically volume one they have also volume two but that one is more colorful i always this is like my second time buying this palette because i just love the colors if you can see the colors the it's all neutrals out there it's all sunset sort of colors then you can do smoky also and if you want to include colors here you go yeah nice so let's get started so basically see it's not important to buy this particular palette obviously you guys can go for any sort of palette just make sure it has sort of brown colors earthy sort of colors it has like more of like say orange like very like soft orange not like super orange like these sort of like a muddy camel sort of color so it works well but personally i love morphe palettes because it's very pigmented and uh, it's very important to use pigmented eye shadows um uh, because it's tend to not like you know when whenever you doing makeup you don't have to grab a lot of product you just need a little bit and you're just out there doing it so well let's get started so first of all i'll take my brush so this is bobby brown brush it's called eye blender brush and you guys won't believe this is 6 years old <laughs> brush wow <laughs> i just love this brush this is like must have brush in your kit because um this is like the foundation like for your eye makeup so you're going to love it i'll tell you how so basically um we'll take lightest color so something like this sort of color it called silk cream this color silk cream so i kind of like oh sorry i kind of like dab it because i feel like when you dab it it's you get more color instead of when you do this you kind of like destroy your palette also because you know the pigments goes here and there inayat anything that we can do before we start our eye makeup do have you used any kind of primer or Oh I'm so sorry I worked so much into it. <laughs> well obviously yes you can use any sort of concealer that you using under your eyes. Uh I sorry I already prepped my skin because I just wanted to give you as much information as I can on eye makeup. So feel free to use any eye primer or um concealer. I personally use this one. It's called Tarte Shape Tape. Okay. Um I just love this. there's so many eye primer out there but but i feel like it doesn't work because when you when you're using it on your eyes you want it to be very pigmented because if your if your foundation is very like clean and then this uh works way better like it's very pigmented the color goes very smooth well i've already primed my eyes but for you guys i'll do it again just to show you guys so i use very little product just very little because this concealer is very high coverage so you don't need a lot of it for sure so what you're saying basically is if you use a concealer then you don't need an eye primer is it no okay. and people have this myth why we want to use concealer on our eyes is it not it, it isn't too heavy for your eyes or it's going to affect it but there's nothing like that if you're putting under the eyes which is the most sensitive area of your face why not here so right. it is just the way to make extra money while selling the eye primer but i feel like try to use products that can do multiple things for you like you know if you see my uh, vanity i have a lot of products but when i whenever i go and do my clients or my brides i only take few products i don't want zillion of things to confuse me i just need uh i always go for a product can which can do two to three things so basically i'm going to dab it i hope i'm clear to all of you so basically always do dabbing motion never do this because if you're doing this you are like removing your eye makeup basically so 
So I tend to always dab the product. And which beauty blender are you using, Anayat? So this beauty blender is my, uh, from my favorite brand. It's called uh, Beauty Blender. Okay. So they were the first one uh, in the world to um, get these beauty blenders. So I just love them. So I'm also looking into the side uh, mirror for just the sake of to see what I'm doing. Well, that's okay. We can see, see you quite clearly. Cool. Okay. So as I prime my eyes, as you can see, it's all clean. And uh, so after that, never go straight into eyeshadow. Always, always you have to use a powder, a setting powder, because obviously at the end of the day, it's a creamy product. So you need to set it before you do any sort of eyeshadow on it. Because if you put straight away the eyeshadow on your base of your eyes, it's going to just get stick to it and you won't be able to blend it. So I'm just taking very little amount of um, setting powder. You can use any setting powder out there. There's really nice one, Laurier Mercier, uh, Hourglass. I'm using Hourglass one because I really like this one. So I'm just, just gently going to sweep that on top of my lips. Like that. And one more trick before we start, it's for usually I always tell people who are new into makeup, it's a really good trick. I especially never do um, my face first. I always end up doing my eyes first because uh, there's no rule for, me, uh, for makeup. You can do it anyway, but I feel like when I do my eyes first and if there's any fallout, then it's, um, it's very easy to clean it when you have full face makeup on and then you're doing your eyes, it's, it gets hard, but it's okay because there's always a way to it. You can always stop. So I always take like a bit of loose powder on my beauty blender and I end up putting under my eyes. If, I have, if you guys have full, if you, like, if you guys like to do full face before um, your eye makeup, then you can always use this trick. So I always just leave it out there. So if is there any fallout, it won't come onto my base. It will actually come here and then I can always remove at the end of the day. So I'm just going to look like this, like a ghost. Okay. <laughs> I'm like honestly going to look like this whole time, <laughs> but it's fine. Anything for you guys. I think okay. you're so pretty. You could never end up looking like a ghost. <laughs> right now I'm definitely looking like one. <laughs> so yeah. Back to that color. I'm taking this. Any You can take any soft brown color, guys. You don't have to. Again, there's no rules for makeup. So go for any eyeshadow palette you like. Just take the light brown color. And then I just always just do this thing for extra product. And then I always go where you all you guys always going to see a line here there's which you call cut your cut crease which is your natural line so you always need to put that first color out there because you guys need to make a space why we do this to kind of like give an illusion that we have big space out here so it's really important to do this doesn't matter whatever I look you're doing. So I always like do this. You can go as dark as you want. So see whenever I'm taking product, I'm just dabbing it like that because it's important. You don't want extra product on your eyes. So simply, I'm just placing the product on top of this, like above my cut crease, because I want to give an illusion here that I have a lot of space um, here. 
I'm doing this. So once you're done doing that, you can always join this thing. So it's like, you're kind of like making V. So it's like V. So it's gonna give you like your shape, some sort of eye, uh, like, you know, like your eye, some sort of shape. Inayat, somebody wants to know, uh, Farha Siraj, that uh, whenever she uses setting powder under her eyes, it makes it very dry. So is there an alternative to that? Well, you can always spray. Okay. So spray. I'll, I'll show you what, what we can do with that because I also have very dry to sensitive skin and I can understand what she means by that. Uh, okay. It do gets dry, but if you use good product, like for example, Laurier Mercier, it's a very thin powder. It's not thick. Like for example, Huda Beauty. Uh, it's also exceptional powder, but I feel the texture of the powder is quite thick, which end up making your, because if you put a lot, it obviously looks like cakeier and you don't yeah. want that. So these, these ones actually very thin powder. Right. So, and if you don't want to use powder, you always have, you always can use um, okay. tissue and place it but it's just going to be hard because you have to do your makeup like that right but it's just an alternative if you don't like powder at all so i'm just giving you a few ideas right so i'm going with the same color on the other side of the eye so if you can see my brush is just here it's not going um a, a lower the crease i'm just keeping it above the crease like that yeah so if we were to use that setting spray like you mentioned instead of the setting powder would yeah. that also avoid exaggerating the fine lines under the eyes if somebody had them um so you can't really do anything with fine lines it's just part of your skin uh you can't vanish them totally because obviously it's just lying just to minimize it uh, you have to just use good eye cream every night or before your makeup also. So it helps to hydrate the loose skin that you have. Right. But definitely if you guys, you guys need fillers for that. <laughs> so as you can see, my eyes have these sort of like definition out there now. So you can see like, you know, it's a lot of space. There's like two spaces. One here and one here. So this this technique actually give you gives the illusion that you have a lot of space and makes your eyes look big at the same time. And once we once we have done it, then I will go one shade darker, which is most likely this is darker than this, not too dark, but like one more shade darker. So I'm gonna Nayat, take if somebody is a little uh, like so you are very light complexioned if yeah somebody were a little darker than you so yeah. the browns that you're choosing would depend on that to be honest um they can just go shade darker that's it it's not like doesn't matter how dark or you light you are uh, the eyeshadow pigments work on every skin tone obviously you have to just see your skin uh, and just choose the color wisely. So for example, if you use light color of uh, shadow here and you, you feel like you can't see it on your lids nicely, then just go one or two shades darker. Sure. So I'm just taking that dark color again and just going on top of that crease that we created, like that illusion with the same brush. Is just going to define it more. And I'm using very, like, I'm not going this, I'm just going very slowly. Like you have to be really gentle with your eyes because at the end of the day, um, they are, it's the most sensitive part of your face. So you have to be very soft. And the good point is if you're soft enough, it's going to blend your eyeshadows way better because you're just being gentle and you're not like rubbing your eyes too much. And I always, if there's nothing left on my brush, I always use, I always used to um, go out like this. 
just to blend any outer part nicely as you can see okay that was our first step now we'll take sort of um blending brush like this or i can take this one actually it's better so this is by smashbox so you can take any sort of blending brush like nice blending brush which like this and uh, if you want to there's one more brush that i lo love it's by mac and it's called uh, the number is 227 it's also amazing brush it's just like similar to this i don't have it right now um but you want something like kind of like not too fluffy but something like this so whenever you so because if we're going to go um out here so we want a brush like this So I am going to go with this sort of color, which is more like red sort of brown. Like it has a bit of tint of rusty red in it. You can go for it, like these sort of color, or if you're doing um, sort of colored eyes and you can use any darker shade. But I'm going for this color right here. And this color, it's called Hillster. So I've taken the color and I'm just going to go starting from the bottom of my eyes from here and I'm going to take it up with motions, up, up, up with motions like this. So can you see how I place the color? Yes. So same, you have to be very gentle. And I used very little amount of color because in the first step, you don't want to go too dark. You can build the color up, but you can never remove it. Then you have to remove your whole eye makeup. So you need to make sure that you're taking less product in the first go. And obviously you can end up building it. There's no problem. But I always using I always use less product in the start so that I can control how much darker I want to go or lighter I want to go. So just like blend, blend, blend. Make sure you're putting a lot of time into your blending because blending is the main thing. Because I see a lot of people, they just don't blend. They just put color out there and they just don't blend. They think it's done and dusted, but you want these sort of blend sort of eyes. So it needs to be out there. Inayas, a lot of people want to know what lip color are you wearing? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm wearing MAC. It's Velvet Terry. It's my favorite nude color. Okay. I love this color. I think it's finished also. As you can see, I use this much. I use this color so much. This is like my everyday color, guys. Okay. So it's Velvet Terry by MAC. It's the best nude you'll ever find in the market. I've been using this color since almost it's been eight years i've been using this color and it's beautiful so oh, you just beautiful on you as well <laughs> so you just need a like a one shade darker lip color and then you just need to use this um, lipstick yeah basically that thank you and then we'll same we'll just use the same shade again i've taken a little bit more and i'm just focusing on the outer side of my eyes so here as you can see. So I'm just adding more out there. So as you can see, my um, I'm moving my brush towards inner side. I'm not going towards outer side because I don't want color here. I want the color to be this side. So you have to create sort of circle, like a round circle, kind of like a half moon thing. And then I'm going to take the first brush again and take that lighter shade that we use in the first step a little bit. And I'm just going to go on top of it. 
So if is there any more darkness sort of spots? Because usually whenever we use a darker color, it leaves little spots on our lid. So just to vanish them, just go on top of it. That's it, like this. Cool. So I'm taking the same color and here also. So towards circling motion, I'm going like this. So everything is about blending well. I take a lot of time because it usually takes me good 20 minutes to do my eyes because I love blending. Blending is the only secret to beautiful eye makeup. You really need to put a lot of time into your blending. So back and forth, back and forth. Just make sure you're just blending it and connecting it also. So just no, don't keep on blending it here, but also uh, move your brush around the this side so it feels like it's connected. So like that. And always like raise your eyebrow. It's a trick that you can always do if you think that you're doing something wrong. So always raise your eyebrow like that. So you can see where the colors are placing. So you can blend it way better. Somebody wants to know, um, Inayat, Sana Malhotra wants to know, do we yeah. choose the color of the eye lenses according to the eye makeup colors that we are yes. applying? It's very important. I believe in that. So for so example, any tips? Yes, so for example, if you're um, using um, any sort of dark colors, I'm sorry about my dog. So if you're using any dark colors, um, for example, on your eyes, if I'm doing smoky eye, so I will tend to wear sort of hazel, um, hazel color contacts um, or silver because I feel like it'll bring your eye, eye color out better, like even your whole eye look. And uh, for example, if I'm doing sort of bronzy golden eyes, then I'll tend to use um, blue color eye contact or maybe green because if you see, when you do contrasting of colors, it works really better. So uh, it's like, you know, all about contrast. So blue, green works really well with gold, pink, pastels, and uh, hazel sort of eye color contact works really well with dark color eyes because it just complement them. So yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. So as you guys can see, our base is almost done. Um, and then what I'll do now, I'll just take the concealer once again, and I'm going to do a cut crease. It's very simple. People usually get really scared. Oh my God, we're going to do cut crease. It's so hard, but I'll make it easy for you. So I'll take on the back of my hand, like the same concealer. And I take this sort of flat brush. It's by Morphe. It doesn't have a number, but you need a brush like this. I don't know if you can see it properly. So it's like, like this. So it's, it, it has this sort of shape. It's flat and it has round shape. So it's easy to kind of create that um, circle that we are going to do right now. So I take like this on, on my brush and I'm just gonna use the mirror very closely. So I'm gonna start from the starting of my eye, like the inner corner. So I'm just gonna do a very rough thing so you can see how we can build it up. So I just made that circle as you guys, guys can see. So it's like a rough line. In so once we that, can't see because the palette is in front. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh. So can you see I draw these this line here? Yes. So you just need to kind of like make this sort of rough eye, like sort of rough, you know, like graph. You can say like a rough line to give you, uh, you know, direction where you need to fill it up. So I'll take the remaining product once again. And I'm just going to 
fill it up like this. So this is the inner three fourth eyelid. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like you can stop it anywhere you like, but I usually go till here. I'll tell you why I went to more than three, uh, more than like almost at the end. Just take your time because I know in the starting it will take a lot of time to create this. But once you get a hang of it, it's it's not that hard. It's just you're creating, you know how you put liner? Sure. You're just putting like in round circle. And it's easy to do this way because this, the shape of your eye is easy to define this line. So like that. So somebody wants to know, will this cut crease suit hooded eyes also? Yes, yes definitely. If you have wooded eyes, it's, it's way better because you're giving the illusion of more bigger eyes, like more space out here. So usually why we do this, obviously, to uh, give us more light out here. So once I'll use other shadows on top of it, you'll see that my eyes look way bigger than it is right now. So again, I'm using the same brush and I've taken more product and I'm just going like that. Our audience also wants to know, Inayat, what shade of uh, Tarte concealer you're using and your shade of the lenses also. Well, this is light medium. Okay. So you can use medium skin tone if you're a bit uh, dusky skin than I am. So if you like, say, shade one or two shades darker than my skin tone, so go for the medium color. Okay. But if you're like similar to my skin tone, go for light medium color. Okay. I think it's perfect. I use this even, you know, for around my face if I want to, but I feel like this is the perfect color. And the lens color that I'm wearing, it's by Vision Clear. You can check them out, their Instagram page. It's called Vision Clear. Okay. And it's, the color is the caramel gray. All right. Thank you. No problem. So here I am. So basically, I've done it both my eyes so if I close it you can see yeah so right now it must be looking very undone but it's okay it's just the it's just the starting so now what I do uh, you can um, you know I'm just going to use like a nice shimmer um, color so I'm going to use maybe this color I usually mix match a lot of colors. I don't always stick to one color because I feel like um, whenever you do a lot of mix matching, it's actually the colors turn uh, comes out to be very nice. So I always, first thing I always use my finger. I never use any brush when it comes to um, shimmer eyeshadows because the warmth of your fingers and the product, it actually glides on better rather than any if you use any sort of brush you can use brush at the end to define it more but for the starting i always go for a shim off with my finger so that it i can put as much as pigment as i can on my lids so i just taken it on my middle finger and i always just go where i've created that illusion Vinayat, we didn't need to set this concealer now with the setting powder. No. Straight away when no, you, you, don't have to. you don't have to because why I uh, set it? Because if I put powder on top of it and then I put shimmer, it won't be that pigmented. Okay. Because right now my concealer is kind of wet. The best part about this concealer, it turns powdery once you put it. So you really don't need any powder to set it also. So, you know, some concealer are still very wet and you can't use shadows on top of it. But the best part about this one, it turns into like a powder feel at the end. Right. Like it's not wet anymore. Right. So, as you can see, I almost 
kind of plays that color. This color is very gray sort, so it's fine. So I'm gonna take the same brush the, that I use for my concealer and I'm gonna take the same pigment again. And now I'm gonna go the line. You know, I need to define that line that I created. So I'm just going like that. So it looks, you know, that sharp line. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. I'm just going to remove this bit. Inayas, oh. what does somebody do when they have very sensitive eyes or watery eyes? Well, uh, there's no solution for it, unfortunately. You have to get used to using product. And always, I always tell people with sensitive eyes to please uh, put some eye drops before you start your eye makeup so that your eyes are very clear and comfortable. But, you know, um, there's a lot of my clients who always say that, you know, we have very sensitive eyes. We can't put even kajal or eyeliner because we, we tend to get watery. But it's all about that it's not something wrong with your eyes. It's just your inner feeling, to be honest. It's more like doing with this. You have to train yourself. Obviously, when I started doing my makeup, I used to like, you know, I couldn't even see it. Like, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. But with the practice, like, you have to practice, practice it. For example, if you're putting kajal, just start with the kajal. So take a kajal every day and start putting on, like, you know, on your waterline. You get used to it. You know, you're like, okay. I know how to do my kajal now. So your eyes get used to it. Then you start with the top of your lids. So it's all about one step, one step. You're getting used to it. Your eyes also getting used to it. But always it's a good, uh, good thing to use drops, eye drops. It, it just helps to get away with any of the redness that you're having in your eyes. So, yeah. Okay. And any eye drops that you can suggest? You can just take it any nice eye drops from... I don't know. I personally don't use it. Uh, but if I use it for my clients, I just use it like, you know, the clear drops that helps to remove any sort any of dirt. Duplicating eye drops. Yeah. So you can take it from any pharmacy. Just tell them that you want to drops for sensitive eyes. Right. And you just want to use it just on the purpose that you just want to clear any sort of dirt if it's stuck into eyes and help with your watery eyes also because when you use eye drops it helps to calm your eyes in a way so yeah so i'm taking the same color once again and i'm putting on this eye now Don't worry if you can't place the color because at the end of the day is your finger. It can be fat, it can be long, it can be anything. So it's a mixture of everything. So you don't have to worry. I always, that's why I said I always use brush at the end to define it. So I'm just using the same brush and I'm just placing the color where the line was. And I always, at the end now, I'm going to check both of my eyes look similar in terms of the circle. It needs to look similar. It can't look one down, one up like that. So you just need to check it once again that both of your eyes are looking like proportion, like in proportion, like that. So once I'm done with this, you can see it's looking good till now. So I, next step, I take this angle brush. This is also by Bobby Brown and it's called angle eyeshadow brush. So this is very important to use this brush. I'll tell you why. So I'm gonna go, so we, as you can see, we took like lighter color and then the darker and then bit darker. And now we're gonna go extreme dark. So maybe this color. And this color name is Chip. Sorry, what was that? Chip. Chip. The H I P. Chip. Okay. So I've taken that color on my angled brush and why I have 
uh, taken this angle brush, I'll tell you how, because it's very easy. So the trick is that we need to give darkness around this area now. So with the angle brush, as you can see, let's see how it's fitting. It's just like, it feels like it's made for my eyes, the angle, the angle of it, the, so I'm just, just on the outer corner, I'm just placing that color. And once again, don't take a lot of color, just take very minimal because you don't need a lot of it. And again, with that same blending brush, I'm just going to go here. Because once I applied that shimmery thing, as you can see, it was not that perfect towards the outer side. So you can always use the blending brush and blend the darker color into the lighter so it looks very blended. Inayat, Monica Kadam in our audience wants to know, what if we mess up while applying this shimmer shadow? What can we do to, you know, make sure it's perfect? Any more tips that you could share with us? Well, um, the, so the best thing, if you, um, you are not able to do the shimmer, just make it all over matte. So that's the best you can do. Because uh, that, there's no other, otherwise you have to end up removing your all eye makeup. But if you don't want to like um, do it, just take any matte shadow and just place it so it will be, it'll be like all one matte sort of eyeshadow color. And then on top, you can use shimmer all over it. So it won't be like how we're doing this sort of classic eyes, but it'll be like all over sort of colored eyes. But you always wanted to use shimmer, so just use shimmer all over it like that. So you know how this is half shimmer and all matte? But it's fine if you uh, kind of messed it up. You can still make it correct. So can you guys see how it's looking right now? Yeah. Now, with the same brush, I'm going to go here. Can you see it here? So I'm going to give a little bit more color. So it looks more defined. So yeah. you know how it was a bit lighter going up there also? So you can usually add more color here. So it will define your eyes more or you can leave it like that, whatever way you like. But I always, at the end, I like to put color here because I feel like it gives very nice shape to my eyes also, like this. Yes, it is adding another dimension there. Yeah. Inayat, now our audience wants to know which foundation you're wearing because your <laughs> complexion is so flawless. <laughs> okay, I'm actually wearing my favorite. I actually use a lot of foundations, but my favorite is Huda Beauty. Okay, four filter? Yeah, it's a fox filter and it's in shade Emirati, okay. which is 310G. Okay. Thank you. No worries. So can you see the difference now, this eye and to this eye? How defined this eye look as compared to this one? Yes. So it's all about using just one brush and just defining it once again. So I'm going to take the same dark color that we took before. I'm going to go into the towards this eye now. So basically, I always start from here. So kind of like giving that kind of eyeliner sort of look and then move towards up. So you kind of like making this kind of like shady, like kind of like marrying two colors together. So basically dark and light shades, you're marrying them together by doing this. And always remember to move your brush towards the side because you're, you're not working towards the outside, you're working towards the inner corner. So always have your brush moving towards inner side. So as you can see, now I'm going to take, there's no amount of 
product on it and I'm just going to go and define this part also. So I just moved it before I was doing this motion. As you can see, the brush crystals were like this, like this. Now I turned it and I'm doing this way. So it's more kind of like shape of the, my eye. So that's the best about, about uh, that's the best part about this brush that you can actually move it around. So when you're doing this words, you know, you know, you know words, then you can just do this way. And then if you're doing the outer words and you can move this way, your brush. Inayat, this yeah. last step of yours, would that be suitable for somebody with small eyes as well? Yes, definitely. People have this uh, misconception that they have hooded eyes, they can't, can never do this. But uh, it actually, as you can see, as you, as you saw when I started, my eyes were not that big, but now it's looking more, there's like more space because we're giving that with illusion of with the eyeshadows, we are giving that uh, you know illusion on, on our eyes that it's a lot of it's a lo lot of space out here. That's why in the starting we started with that lighter shade, then we went towards uh, more darker, like one shade darker, just to define this and this shape more. And then we with the cut crease we have given a lot of light. So basically, why we do cut crease because we want to give a lot of light towards our this area it actually makes our eyes look bigger because we are getting lighter um, but if you use darker colors it actually tends to make your look i i look go cool, like you know where it looks small like all together you know what i mean i'm sorry when i talk a lot my i feel like you know my neck is gone <laughs> my voice is gone like my throat basically so once again i'm just checking it again if there's anything missing i feel like this shadow is a bit darker and this is lighter. You have to check this also. Just make sure that all colors are well blended. If you think that this eye is looking darker, like from the outer side, you need to make sure that you do with the same one also that it doesn't look uh, different. So I'm taking the same color again and I'm just going again, once again, into the same direction and I'm blending it and adding it more color out there so it looks similar to the right eye like this. So now I feel like my both eyes look similar. What do you think, Tina? <laughs> As you can see me. <laughs> Absolutely fine. And um, that's it. I think we have done it. Now one more step that I like to do. This is something extra if you're going out for party. And obviously, it's a festive season. Why not? We can create that festive look. So I always use glitter. This is very optional. You can also leave it like this. Trust me, I love my eyes like this also. But I always love to use glitter if I want to add just extra glamour to my look. So I simply take it and just here, the lighter side, I always put it just very little bit. And which glitter are you using in it? Just one minute, I'll tell you. So whenever you're putting glitter, always make sure you use your fingers so it it's not too, um, you know, because obviously every glitter has a little bit glue. So you don't want to destroy your makeup. So always use your fingers so that you take that extra glue out of, of your eyes. So can you see the difference it makes? Yes. Looks stunning. Just a little shimmer. <laughs> yeah. And I always like to do one extra part, which I love. I use loose pigments also. So I'm going to show you how I use it. It's like this by MAC. You take it a little bit on back of your hand like this. I'll tell you, it's like a magic. I always call this a magic trick. So as you can see, you just place it. I place it kind of like all over because I like shimmer. But this is a very defined kind of glitter. It doesn't look glittery like, you know, um, it doesn't feel like you have uh, used any sort of glue. It just, it just give you that shimmer, but without noticing, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
so this you put right uh, before your actual other um, shimmer thing um, driver you can use it on its own if you want to okay. if you don't if you want to skip this part okay. you can always use this and this this is called glam rock it's by urban decay it's okay. beautiful glam um, basically urban decay has beautiful range of glitters that you can use so i'm just using the same brush just to take that extra shimmer out from my inner corner so it looks more defined like this perfect yeah so i'll just show you without using glitter i'm just going to use this and you can see the difference so i'm going to take pigment on back of my hand like that like this and here i'm just going to press it or i can just use the same brush and take it and just dab it if you don't like using your fingers just go for brush but with me i always use brush at the end i don't know why i just love using my fingers when i used to work at bobby brown they always said to us the the best tool that you can use on your face is your hands she believed in the bobby brown she believed in it because she said the natural look that you can give from your hands you can't give it from brushes obviously brushes are there to define the look but the warmth of your hands can actually create very flawless look so even she used to she used to use her hands for foundations also okay yeah inayat um, somebody wants to know are there any other <laughs> brands by drug stores for glitter that you could recommend or even foundations people want to know the foundation you can go for maybelline it's a really nice fit me foundation it comes with that it's beautiful foundation uh, i actually use it sometimes for my daily wear if i don't want to wear like huda or any high end foundation it also gives you flawless finish and obviously it's cheaper and to be honest i won't suggest using cheap glitters the reason is that i believe in quality and if something goes on top of your eye and it's cheap enough what if it gets you infected you know you'll end up paying the doctor so glitter is something it's very fine thing and i always suggest to my clients or my brides that please if you want to invest invest in good palettes or glitters because it's at the end of the day it's your eyes and it's the most sensitive part and you want to put good high quality stuff out there but there's one more brand nix they have cheap uh like pricing in terms to the other brands you can use that brand also it's also good but i would suggest go for um like urban decay or like you know nice brands out there just maybe just buy one glitter and you know save for another glitter like you know glitter thing but just buy them one by one so budgeting ladies and now sana malotra wanted to know some eye palettes that you could suggest for beginners okay sure i'm just putting that glitter again so it looks similar both of my eyes <laughs> the best part was this glitter that i don't have to invest the why i'm suggesting this one also uh, ladies uh, so for example i can't find it Uh, when you use like loose glitters like this like in the pot then you have to also invest into the uh, glue so right. this one i why i recommend this um uh, because it's a glue and the glitter two in one and you don't have to worry about putting glue and then putting the glitter this is something very easy like pens uh, pencil sort that you just can just do like this so that's why i love them but obviously i use loose glitters also because you can't find all the colors in the in these because they have very limited i think 6 to 7 colors um that's why i use loose loose glitters for other colors that i can't find in this one um so yeah i shared a palettes that i can recommend uh for the beginners definitely go for um morphe palettes buy i'm saying morphe because it's also cheap uh i think it's 4000 4000 to 4500 bucks 
um huda palettes are also good but it's on bit pricey range like this huda palette here it's uh, 50 to 100 52 to 5300 but why i like morphe because it gives you more variety it gives you more product you are not just stuck with few eye shadows and it's like big palettes also so even if you buy two palettes from morphe like say jacqueline hill volume 1 volume 2 you're sorted you don't need more palettes Okay. Uh, if you're just buying it for yourself, but if you're a makeup artist, obviously you need variety. But if you just want to focus on yourself and it's for your own personal use, I would suggest that go for Morphe palettes because they are cheap in price. Also, they are pigmented, and it's lot many options. So because obviously from this palette, I can create maybe hundred eye looks, different eye looks. So I feel like it's very affordable. it's an very investment yeah so and it obviously it lasts you very long like many years and let me tell you guys i shed of never expires okay this is a secret that i'm telling everyone wow. yes you do need to change your eyeliner or mascara every 6 months but when it comes to eye shadow it actually never expires until unless you clean them properly and you take care of them and you keep them in a nice shape Wow, that's news to me. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> no, because people tend to just throw the palettes after one or two years. But trust me, most of my palettes, uh, I can't. I think this one here. So this is by by Bobby Brown. Okay, this is a customized. When I used to work with Bobby Brown, I got this palette. It's like I actually made it because this is you can take it out. Oh yeah, so the refillable ones, right? Yeah, like that. So I, you can actually customize it according to the shades that you like. I love this palette because it has all limited shades in it, especially this one. I use this at my wedding time. Okay. So I use this color. It's very beautiful color. I show you the pigment of the soap. This color. So you just take it like this, and you just. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I think we can. Yeah. So it's a very beautiful um, palette, and this color—it's six years old. This palette is six years old, and you can still see how it is. And the pigment still works amazing. So it's a myth that eyeshadow gets expired. I don't think so. They do in my dictionary. That's what I've learned. So I've been using my palettes since years. So whenever I buy palettes, I feel like it's, it's like an investment for me that I can keep on using it. Great. Awesome. So now we're gonna go under the eyes as our upper lid is done. So I'm gonna take the same angled brush and I'm gonna take the lighter shade that we started with. And we're gonna use. We're gonna place our brush here where the color begins, and just place it like this. it must be not looking much but i'm sure you can see it yes is this the same angled brush in ayat yes is the same one that's why i love this brush because you can use it anywhere so can you see how i was using this side like this yes. and now i'm using this side like that so it's giving that I don't have to make any efforts it's actually working for myself like you know it's actually working for me because it's just moving how I wanted it to move like this and I'm going to take the dark shade this one that we used at the end for the outer corners just to connect the both things together so it looks like you know like they are in form so same here can you see the difference now yes so same again i'm taking the same color and i'm just going here Yeah. 
like that. And again, once again, I take that blending brush and I just go all over from the outer side because as we added color down there, we want it to look blended. So we'll go once again like that. Just very little, like soft. Here you go. Perfect. So now, once again, I'm taking the same glitter. You can take the shimmer eyeshadow that you used, but I like to go festive once again. So I'm just gonna use this in my inner corner, just like a straight line like that. So it will open up my eyes more. Just like that. Beautiful. And then just to bring a twist, I'm gonna use this. I'll show you this. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a lot of pencils, so I'm like, okay, where is it? So I'm using colored pencil. And I'm using color pencil on my waterline just to, you know, just to add a bit more color. You can use any color. I'm going for sort of green color. So I'm going like sort of this color. So I'm using this. So I just place the finger like this and I apply the color. Which pencil is that, Anayat? So this pencil is by Makeup Forever 52. They have great pencils to use. So can you see how it's giving me a tinge of color? Yes. Like I could, I, you know, you can have, you can use black also, but I feel like um, this green is bringing out my eye color more. And obviously if, you know, I'm wearing black, so it can go very well with my outfit also. You, I don't have to worry about if I use black or green, but obviously do it according to what you're wearing. For example, if you're wearing purple, then you can go a bit of purple uh, down there. And if you're wearing sort of beige sort of outfit, you can go beige color out there. It will help you to open up your eyes more. So whatever, uh, whatever color you want, according to your outfit, you can place it. There's no harm using colored eyeliner in the waterline because it works beautiful. And what shade is that? Mm. If we could know. So this shade is by... Oh, it's hard. Because they write so small on it. <laughs> like, okay, what is it? What is it? Okay, so it's F514 by okay. Forever 52. Okay, thank you. So... I, it's time to take this powder out of my eyes. As I'm done with my eye makeup, the only part is left that lashes and eyeliner. I don't need powder for that. So I'm just using a big brush and just moving all the extra powder away or any fallout on my face. So as you can see, it's as clear as it was in the starting without any fall on my face, like any fall of the product. Yeah. Any questions regarding this look before I add another element to it? A lot of people are wanting to know how do you look after your um, under eye area of the skin? How do you remove the product? How do you avoid fine lines? So basically I use this, which is almost finished. As you can see, I've ordered new one. I use this day and night. Doesn't matter I'm putting, I'm wearing makeup or not. Um, sorry, yeah. So it doesn't matter if I'm wearing makeup or not. I always use this uh, liquid thingy. Uh, it's by Biodarma. It's a uh, sensitive skin cleans and soothes makeup liquid removal. And it's really good for sensitive eyes uh, to remove your eye makeup. And even, even like, for example, if I wash my face and I'm going to use a liquid after this, because sometimes when you use 
cleaners or cleansers in your shower it doesn't tend to take out everything that you have on your face so you always have to use a liquid um with a cotton cotton pad and just you know before you apply any sort of moisturizer or oil always use this to remove any extra bit so it will help your skin later okay so what you're saying is use this and then use oils or cleansers is it yeah okay. yeah awesome so um i'm going to wear lashes so i'm just going to use my old lashes that i'm anyway wearing used to wear it i feel like when you when you have a new pair of lashes just a uh, trick um never whenever is your main day or a main event never go for new lashes always wear something that you've been wearing it for um two three times because it's easy to put also and it's it's you get hang of it also and it looks nice so when as a new lash obviously it's get hard first time to apply it so i always use a uh, two three times use lash because i feel like it's easier to put on and uh, for your main day it looks fabulous so how because many times can you repeat one pair of lash in it depends on the quality the ones that i'm using is mink lashes the, okay. these you can use good 20 to 25 times okay so yeah i really take care of them so whenever i apply them and i take it off i clean them with the same cleaner uh, cleanser that i've showed okay and i just leave them to dry on its own and then just apply it next time all right so farah siraj wants to know that sometimes when she is done removing her eye makeup her yeah. eyes seem to swell up even though she uses very um, high end quality uh, makeup products that must be related to her skin um she should go to dermatologist for sure because if she is swelling up i feel like uh, she must be allergic to something that is in that high end cleanser so she you need to show that to the dermatologist because they know the ingredients quite well so it must be some one ingredient must not be suiting her because the only way that you can uh, you have can you can have irritation or something from a product it must be maybe that one ingredient that you are allergic to yeah. for example i'm allergic to honey even my face is allergic to honey so any of the product which has honey in it little bit of honey content i can't use it because the moment i use it um i feel like a burning sort sort of sensation on my skin and plus it looks really bad like on my skin the next day i have pimples what not it means i'm allergic to honey my skin is allergic to honey because honey is very warm and my skin being very sensitive i can't handle honey Right. so it's just about that one ingredient so i would yeah. suggest that you go to dermatologist once and maybe show what sort of products you are using because they are the they are the ones who can actually guide you in way better right. when it comes to your skin so yeah i'm just going to use a uh, glue so i'm using do Okay. you can get it at the max store i love this glue it works amazing uh, because some glues are really pathetic when you use it because it tends to harm your own natural eyelash also uh, but these ones never do so it works quite well so i just take very like slim sort of brush and i just apply on the tip of it where the band is like that and i just leave it to be a little dry same with this one see lashes can be tricky to use when you're using it for the first time and you're not used it or not at all used to of using it but at the end of the day again it's all about the practice so you really need to practice putting them on and uh, within a few days you'll be perfect and you'll be more comfortable using them so 
that's what I always suggest to people who love lashes but don't know how to wear it. So just keep on maybe buy a cheaper lash and just try every day for everyday use that you, you know, applying it on your eyes. Um, because it's, it'll be cheap also and you won't mind using it again and again on your eyes, but you'll get a hang of it, how to use it. So I, I will let them dry for a little bit more while because I feel like when they are edge of total dry, it's easier to put on. Yeah. Are these magnetic eyelashes any better or easier to use in eye? I hate magnetic lashes. I'm sorry to say. I don't know what's with the world. Um, magnetic eyes never worked. I've tried them just, okay. you know, for the sake of it. But whenever you apply it, it just, so the, basically it's two pairs. So one, right. like on for the top and one for the bottom. And when you apply both together, it gets, it's like kind of they stick together. But when you stay lashes, you want to, it looks like your lashes, right? At the end of the day, you don't want it to look fake, but the magnetic ones end up looking fake because you can see they, they are like literally coming out like from here. But nowadays they even have the magnetic eyeliner and the eyelash sticks to that eyeliner. But let me tell you one thing. Those eyeliners are very risky for your eyelashes because okay. at the end of the day, it's an eyeliner and they have put glue in it. Simple right. as that. That's right. the only way, obviously, it will stick to your lash, right? Agar, like, jaise ki ek eyeliner hota hai, aur aap usko, like, lagate ho, it's a normal liner, but aapko eyelashes ko uske saa glue karna hai, to aap usme glue hi dalo ge. So that's, they, it's just the way of the marketing. Right. They think, oh, it's an amazing product, but trust me, at the end of the day, it's just the liner and glue in it. So you remember, like, when we put eyelash and we put we place the glue we are just putting on here we are not putting band, the, yes. or direct on our eye natural eyelashes so right. it, it it's not affecting our eyes a lot but when you use that you know magnetic whatever eyeliner <laughs> out there and people are like i don't yeah. know i feel like it's not good because i have personally used it and i feel like i've lost my lashes using it Okay, wow. I'm so so glad I asked you this. <laughs> so I don't want to destroy my natural lash for sure. <laughs> I think nobody does. Yeah. So I'm just placing it. Okay. It's a trick, bit tricky. So you kind of like place it. Like I always tend to use from the end. Start from the end and then place it. see I leave it on I don't really push it around I work it around very gently I work around it very gently because you need to be gentle enough you don't want to push your eye so I just kind of like press it also at the same time like that wow nice so it's all about just going slow and press it same with here so i start from the outer side make sure that my outer side is attached and then i go towards inner side like this it's just easier way to put on I somehow always feel I'll mess up my eye makeup when I put on my lashes. See, it's, it's just practice. Trust yeah. me, it's all practice. You just have to be very gentle with them. And I always tell people, like, when they're new to the eyelashes, always practice it without wearing any eye makeup or any makeup. Because, right. you know, you're just practicing, you're learning it. You don't need to do eye makeup. That's a good tip. See, one more trick I can tell you, which I messed it up. If you leave your glue for too long, it doesn't stick also. 
so right. i have to reapply the glue which is good because while we were talking it got too yeah. dry right so obviously don't leave it more than few seconds okay so like because obviously i was talking and i was explaining how to do this right so that glue totally dried out that's why it's not sticking on my eyes so it's all right you can just take it again okay so in the right. meanwhile somebody just wants to know if, uh, you know every time they leave the lashes after cleaning them the band goes out of shape any tips for that they don't use any oil material first thing use liquidy things which has no oil in it so cleanser or oh, which has no oil so because oil actually destroy your lashes in a way okay. so try to use a uh, liquid cleaner cleansers so it has no oil content in it and just use uh you know cotton bud so take dip your cotton bud into the clean, uh, cleanser and just brush it on um uh, right. on your lashes so this is the best way you can do or you can just use mascara wand and dip into that cleanser and use the brush right. wand on um, that mascara wand also if you don't if you don't if you're not comfortable doing with the cotton bud right okay it's time to put this on before it again dry yes. out <laughs> so i always also hold it from the center I'm glad to see it's tough for everybody, not just for me. Yeah. No, because see, it doesn't matter your makeup artist or what. Eyelashes is always a thing that is kind of like tough, but it's okay. You get used to it. So now you can see it's totally out there. Yes, and it looks beautiful. I, yeah, and I and one more trick, guys. If you're using thicker lashes like this, you don't need. eyeliner because it kind of gives you that eyeliner look as you can see yeah and that is my trick that i usually do and even to be honest if you have hooded eyes eyeliner actually tend to make your eye look smaller because it takes up the space so i always prefer using bit of voluminized eyelashes so that my i don't have to use eyeliner and i can just skip that part and if i even i close my eyes it looks like i'm wearing eyeliner but i'm not wearing eyeliner yes So in I act uh, do we use mascara first or yes, so mascara later? Yes, so I'll just let it dry a little for okay. good two minutes because I really want the glue to be well dry before I put mascara. Okay. So I make sure I keep pressing them towards like this, like that. So when you're pressing it like this, it's actually going to blend with your own natural lashes also. Right. Like this. Perfect. Before we move on to mascara, a last thing that we need to add onto our eyes is a highlighter on your this area. We call it like a high bone area onto the eyes because it has bone here, so it's like a bone area. So I always take any sort of highlighter that you have at your face. I'm using the uh, Anastasia Brazil Emrezi highlighter. So I'm just placing it on just here on the top of it near near to my eyebrows. So it's going to give that hint of light. Whenever I'm going to go into light it's just going to like really outshines it. So like that. I am sure you can't see it, but whenever you go into a light, it's just gonna brighten it up more and feel like you have like you know light. You know how we highlight our face? It's about it's all about highlighting your eyes. And what lashes are you using in Ayat? Well, it's a secret. It's uh, my own lashes. Oh wow! Is 
going to launch soon so yeah oh we are very excited about that then <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm excited to even introduce it wonderful congratulations <laughs> thank you so i'm using mascara by hura beauty okay legit lashes yes love it so for this i'm going to go a bit closer because i don't want to one more trick guys you don't want to mess it up your face so always go very near while you're applying your mascara so i always make sure that i look like really open up my eyes before i put mascara on my lower lashes like this and same with the other side any other good brands of mascara inayat there are so many brands that i love um i'll tell you in a bit okay and the name of your highlighter also please it's um emrezy emrezy e m a e m r e z y i think if i'm not e m r e z y it's by anastasia bevels Okay, thank you. And I just put a little bit on top of my lashes, but I don't go at the end. I always keep it where my own natural la- uh, eyelashes are because I really don't want to make it look very fake. My own lashes, so I just make sure that I'm just putting it on my own natural lash, the mascara, like that. because if you end up putting mascara on your fake lashes it's going to look more fake so you don't want that so i'm just going to apply a little bit blush because i feel like when i put when i apply the powder my blush is worn out so i'm going to take bobby brown blush it's called rose It's okay. such a beautiful color for your everyday use. I love this blusher, and I'm just taking it on my blush brush. It's by Clarins. This blush brush, and to apply the br- uh, blush, there's one trick: smile as wide as you can because you want to apply it on your apple of your cheeks. So I'm gonna smile like this. and i while i'm applying i'm moving my brush towards my higher cheekbones because i want it to look very blended i just don't want color to stay here like this so sana malhotra wants to know is it necessary to apply uh, mascara when you're wearing false eyelashes yes you have to uh, it's important because obviously when you're wearing eyelashes your upper lashes look really long and you don't have anything here it's going to look awkward and it's not going to complete your look so always um wear a little bit mascara just to give because as you can see it's giving definition to my eyes and it's even opening it up a bit more because when you put um uh, mascara here it gives you the illusion that you have shadowy effect here and it's going to open up your eyes more right yep so here it is guys our festive look and i think you look just mind blowing i can't get my eyes off you <laughs> oh it's so sweet. stunning okay. and one more thing at yes. the end as everyone was saying i was wearing powder so obviously i want to look as glowy as i was before so there's no rule for sprays guys so you can use it any time any time of the day you can use it 10 times if you want it's just refresh your makeup and if there's any extra powder on your face it just helps to calm that powder like down also so i'm just using this primer water set and refresh spray photo finish spray by smashbox i love this product it's beautiful sorry yeah 
and I'm just gonna spray it. Feel free to put, a, put it on your eyes. <laughs> so here it is, my final look. I'll just let this water dry. So yeah, this is more like I will, I will call this classic um, kind of like gray, smoky sort of eyes. I would give this eye name if I want to, but yeah. I think so it's guys, just such a neutral color that it would go, like you said, with pretty much any outfit. Yeah, so that's the reason I wanted to do this color because I want you guys to, you know, wear this look with any outfit. So see, I'm wearing very sort of Western sort of top and it's going very well with it. And you, even if you're wearing Indian clothes, like sari, suit, lehenga, um, you can just create this look because this is such a neutral because the colors that I use, like which is brown and sort of, uh, you know, kind of like champagne silver, it actually goes with any outfit that you're going to wear. And obviously, please feel free to uh, play with colors. Just don't stick to these colors. It's just the same, same storyline. You just have to use, for example, if you're using uh, purple eyeshadows, just use the lighter purple, darker purple like that, or, you know, just start with that. And once you get hang of it, then you can always mix match the colors for more advanced looks. But I feel like for a nice festive look, or natural look that you can wear, you know, even if you're at home and you're going out, this can never go wrong. I totally agree. And you look marvelous, Inayat. <laughs> of course, you're very beautiful, but you look fantastic. And thank you so much for this enlightening session. Any last tips that you would like to share with our audience? Um, I just want you to guys, uh, I wanted to tell you guys, as a makeup artist, we always tend to say that, uh, please use this product, that product, but your natural beauty is from within. So please take care of yourself. Uh, we ladies out here tend to forget about ourselves, you know, when we are busy with our family life, taking care of our kids or, you know, our professional life. Uh, it's really important to take care of yourself as a person. So you know, give yourself one hour each day where you exercise because exercise is good for blood circulation and it's really important for your body. And uh, drink a lot of water because um, the natural uh, makeup is for the outer part, but the, your, you know, your inner beauty is also very important. So to have that flawless skin, eat a lot of vegetables, lot of, drink a lot of water and exercise, give time to yourself stay happy stay positive because whatever is inside is going to show outside also so it's very important to take care of these things beautifully said uh, self-love and self-care in ayat right self-love self-care don't forget about self about yourself in this like you know roller coaster that we are living in in the world right now because obviously we all have responsibilities and whatnot but I always tell people that they need to take care of your of themselves first. Yeah. So if you are if you're going to take care of your skin, your body, uh, you just need very minimal amount of makeup just to enhance your looks. That's it. Well, thank you so much for this session, Inayat. It was wonderful being here with you, and thank you so much to our wonderful audience. And wishing all of you a wonderful evening and a fantastic Diwali. Bye okay, for now. Okay, happy Diwali, guys. Thank you so much, Tina, for having me here and uh, obviously sipping thoughts. It was a wonderful session. And I hope, uh, you know, little trips and tricks helped you guys. They absolutely did, Anayat. Bye for now. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali.